Hey guys, welcome back. It's Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy. This week I wanted to talk a little bit about my wife's daily driver, and I'd argue that this is probably the most underrated BMW in the last 20 years. So what she drives is a 2008 BMW 535 XI, so it's the all-wheel drive. But um, the 535 is a little unique in that it has the inline six that is also shared with the 325, three, I'm sorry, 525, 528, and 530 but the 535 adds a twin turbo package. So I'd suggest this is very heavily underrated and right now you can get a screaming deal on one of these cars. So let me do a walk around and we'll talk about it. Okay, so here she is. Now bear with me, it is starting to sprinkle a little bit and so um, I might do a little bit faster walk around if it starts getting a little wet out here. But um, this is basically the car. It looks like you're running the Mel 5 Series sedan um you know we happen to have a white one which is probably one of the more generic colors but i also think it's one of the cleanest looking colors i think that this car really comes together it's the full package you know it's got four doors so it's a fantastic family hauler it travels nice it's super comfortable the twin turbo does make it very very fast um it's rated at 302 horsepower but i feel like it's more quick than it is fast i don't know if that makes sense but accelerating uh you really feel those turbo boost in and uh, it's just a blast to drive it is it's probably one of the most enjoyable cars i've ever driven and um you know again this thing is what 13 years old so it's certainly not new it's got um you know this one has 138,000 miles on it now we bought it six years ago with 80,000, and um have really loved it ever since if we take a look inside, you'll see that this thing has all the amenities and power of every other vehicle out there. But I'd argue that again, it's put together in such a nice package. Um, the 2007 on, so this is a 2008, incorporated the newer updated iDrive system. So we've got the larger uh, in-dash monitor there with the better iDrive system. It's got uh, literally every package available with the exception of the cold weather package, which is a little unique because we live in central Oregon where we get truly four seasons. So somebody at some point did add aftermarket heating elements to these seats. And so we do have the heated, um, heated seats, which is really the only part of the all weather package or the winter package I'd want. Back seats are nice and spacious, right? I mean, again, this is a super comfortable touring car. Um, great for road trips and everything. It does have the window screens all the way around, which is great. Um, you know, everything else. It's just, it's a fantastic, fantastic car. Um, this particular one was, like I said, very heavily optioned. Um, you know, I, I think the only, it's got the premium package, the uh, sport package, it's got, again, just about everything you could want. And then the aftermarket heated seats really did finish out the the loading. Um, and then as far as, you know, again, that, that bi-turbo or twin turbo six in line six, this thing produces a ton of power and really just makes it cruise right along down the highway. Um, you know, you can pull out into traffic and accelerate very, very quickly. I don't know what the zero to 60 time is, but it, it's not a lot. It, it's pr pretty fast. Um, the truth of it is this car is one of, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. They built, made a ton of these cars. And, you know, the five series is kind of unique in that, well, it's, it's just like the three series, really. They have, let's see, the, the five, I think it's the 520, the 523, the 525, the 528, the 530, the 535, and then you jump up to the 545 and the 550, both which have V8s. And um, so again, I, I would argue that this is a very underrated car, primarily because of those twin turbo. Most people think to get power out of a five series, you really have to have that 545 or the 550. Uh, and I'd argue that's not true. Now the 545, I want to say cranks, well, at the crank, I don't know, but let's say it puts out 500 and, I'm sorry, 300, I'm trying to think out loud here, 330 horsepower or something like this. And this is just over 300. So, you know, you've got an extra 20 some odd horsepower pushing that car down the street. But at the same token, you've got a much heavier engine. And so I don't know that you're going to feel the power quite the same way. 
Um, once you get up to the 550, you're pushing 350, 355 horsepower. Yeah, you, you might start to feel that, but again, it's a heavier engine, so it's hard to say. The beautiful thing about this particular car is that XI you see there on the rear bumper or on the rear uh, trunk lid, that means it's all wheel drive. So I read an article right after we bought this car about six years ago, that if I were to tune this car and chip it, it would actually produce almost as much power as an M5 and have all wheel drive capabilities. So making it a much more desirable and versatile and really all around great, greater car. And so because it was my wife's daily driver, we never did chip it. I never planned to chip it. I would love to, it's about a $500 upgrade. Um, so it's relatively affordable to unlock more than a hundred horses, but this lighter package, um, you know, doesn't need the 500 horses that a, a V10 M5 cranks out. So uh, kind of an interesting approach, but again, this car is super under appreciated. Uh, again, I'd, I'd say it's probably the most underappreciated BMW of the last, yeah, 15 or 20 years. Uh, because it just has such a complete package. It is literally everything you'd want in a car, in a sedan. And these can very easily be found for between, you know, five and $10,000. Now we bought this car six years ago, again, with 80,000 miles. It's a 2008. So six years ago, it was 2015. Um, and we, we paid about 19,000 for it, but we also bought an extended warranty, which was worked into the price. So you know, it, it's, if I were to sell it today, my guess is it's worth seven or eight grand. Um, but every maintenance has been up to date. Everything is, is top notch, really. Um, it does need new tires, but aside from that, yeah, it's in, it's in really great running shape. It's a daily driver. It's been dependable and we've had to do quite a bit of maintenance. It started raining. So I came back inside. But um, we've done a lot of maintenance on this car. I mean, really, we've uh, done shocks at all four corners. I've done brakes at all four corners. We've had a valve cover gasket leak get replaced. I want to say we did a head gasket. Um, I think that was the first thing we did. Um, in our winter wheels and tires, we have new TPMS sensors and um, just some other obscure maintenance, right? I mean, the, the washer reservoir was leaking, so I had to fix that. Um, you know, just a few other things. And uh, for the most part, it's been a pretty bulletproof car. You know, BMW gets kind of a bad rap. Every time it breaks, it costs a thousand bucks. That's not wrong. You know, really, um, that, that has been kind of the MO of this car is anytime it breaks, we're looking at a thousand to fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar repair bill, depending on what it is and how severe it is and whether or not I can do it myself. If I can repair it, you know, it doesn't cost a whole bunch, but if it's something that I have to take to a dealer or something I have to take to a mechanic, um, because I don't have the tools or the scanning tools or the, you know, whatever it is that the, the dealer might have or a, a specified European mechanic might have, you know, again, I, it kind of varies, but uh, it's not incredibly challenging to work on. And for the money, you are getting one heck of a car. And so to me, you know, my wife and I were looking at replacing this car because again, it's starting to get up there in miles. I think I said it had 138,000. Um, you know, we've put almost 60,000 miles on this car in six years. And again, cause it is a daily driver and it's also comfortable enough that we can get in and go for a couple hour, you know, several hundred mile road trip. It's super comfortable. Um, we've driven it down to Napa Valley and, and you know, wine tasted and done all these things and driven back. Uh, we've done that a few times. We've, we've traveled in this car quite a bit. To replace it, it's gonna be challenging because not everything is gonna have the comfort and the power of this car. And so we're somewhat limited in our replacement options. You know, I keep telling my wife, let's just find the same car, but newer. Um, you know, maybe it does make sense to move up to, I don't know, 545 or a 550, because those are gonna have a few more bells and whistles that this one might not. But she also wants something that's, you know, strong and dependable and reliable that she's, you know, with lower miles that we can drive for a while without having any concerns. And so that's, that is the concern with this car now that it's pushing 140 K um, it's likely to start giving us a few issues. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that and whatnot. But in the meantime, it's one heck of a daily driver. We love it. We love it, love it, love it. And so, um, again, those are some reasons for why I think that this thing is probably the most underrated BMW. Uh, it's got a ton of power. It is beautiful to look at. They really engineered this thing well. 
You know, one thing that adds to the comfort of this particular car is that it has that luxury premier package, I believe is what it's called, premier, luxury, I, I don't know. But it's got the, uh, you know, the fully 27 different adjustability uh, fancy seats out of the 7 Series, the 750. <clears throat> and, you know, so that's, that's huge. Um, it, it's hard to, again, get into any other car. Uh, you, my truck is comfy, but this car, it, it's just like riding on air. I mean, the thing drives so nice and smooth, and those seats are incredible. So again, you know, we'd really have to take our time and find the right car to replace this one with if we want something comparable. Uh, we kind of screwed ourselves over by doing that because I just don't think that there's many, very many cars out there um, that are going to check all the boxes quite the same way. So anyway, in the meantime, we're going to continue to drive this car. We're going to keep it a while longer. Um, there's a few little odds and ends that are kind of nitpicky bugging me. Uh, it doesn't affect anything about the car. It's just nitpicky things. So I'm going to work on those, get the car totally dialed in the way we want it. And like I said, it needs new tires and a few other little things. But once we get those things handled, um, it'll be a great car for a long time. So anyway, I, you know, I think that's about all I've got on that car. It's just, again, it's a sweet ride. I would encourage, I would encourage you to look at one. If you're, if you're looking for an everyday four door drivable sedan that has a lot of power, that looks good, it's not going to cost you a total arm and a leg, right? I mean, like I said, you can find a really solid example under $10,000. It's just super under, underappreciated. So take a look. It's worth a look. It's worth a drive. Uh, I don't think you'll regret it. And if you find one, let me know. Post down in the comments below. If you're deciding to look for one and you want to ask questions, please uh, feel free. I am available to do so. I can, I can take more specific videos of different parts of this car. Um, you know, I can, I can do a driving kind of example video type of thing for you. Uh, and maybe I'll do that in a future episode. But for now, I appreciate you guys. Please like and share and comment down below. And as always, may every investment you make be a good one. Till next time.